Well, good morning. Welcome. We're glad you're here. I'm glad I'm here. So let's do the job. We are in the book of Hebrews, in case you're here today, and this is your first Sunday to be with us. We are racing through the book of Hebrews, and today we're in chapter 11. You can see the symbol or graphic that we've depicted the book, Jesus is Greater. In the book of Hebrews, the Jews 2,000 years ago were confronted with uh, the reality that being a follower of Christ will involve persecution. They were being greatly persecuted, and members of that church were thinking about shucking Christ and going back to Judaism. And the author is arguing with them, trying to give them a cogent argument as to why that is not wise, arguing that Jesus is the goat, that he is the greatest of all times, therefore any choice to abandon him would be unwise in the least. So today we come to chapter 11 where he has transitioned from doctrine to duty, talking about our response and what we should do, and he's going to give us a laundry list, if you will, of people who have demonstrated their fellowship of God. I want today to argue with you, you're probably going to have to get the tape because it'll be so fast, you probably will... Uh, uh, not be able to keep up, but I have a lot of information I want to give you because I, this is such an important topic. Matthew chapter 17, verse 20 says, And he, Jesus, said to them, Because of the littleness of your faith, for I truly say to you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible to you. It seems so good. It sounds good, that verse. Yet, if you have been a believer for a while and you have stumbled across Matthew 17, 20, and you've seen that verse, it's probably caused more confusion, frustration, and doubt than confidence to assert. It says, after all, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, the smallest seed of domestication at that time, then you can move mountains. So let me ask you, how is your mountain moving business? You, you know that you read that verse and then you start trying to apply it and it doesn't work. And you end up wondering, what? What's wrong? Something has to be wrong because I know I have faith. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he died for my sins. And I live my life as a believer. And here this verse is telling me that if I have an itsy bitsy teeny weeny little faith, I can move mountains. So something has got to be wrong. The result is that most Christians confuse, frustrated, and doubt. And we just give up. The problem with that verse is that it's mistranslated. Mistranslation will always lead to improper interpretation, and I guarantee you that ends in a false application. The verse is not correctly translated, and it leads to all kinds of problems. He is not talking about the size of faith in terms of its seedness. And so, so many Christians are just, when it comes to the topic of faith, they've just been made to not want to hear it. And that's unfortunate, because faith is so critical to who and what we are. As a community, we don't exist without faith. And so we come to Hebrews chapter 11, another great faith chapter, and we see all this list of people who are said to have faith and what they've done. And then you look at your life and you say, I, I, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. So today I hope to try to clear up a little confusion, uh, hopefully, in terms of what this chapter is actually doing. 
The first thing you need to know, and I hope you understand, is that faith proves that we trust in God. Okay? But it is faith work that is the evidence of it. So you should put in parentheses, faith work proves that God, that we trust in God. Because he is going to talk about not what faith is, but what it does. What does faith cause you to do as evidentiary of its presence? The chapter 11 of Hebrews is teaching the exact same thing that you will find in James chapter 2. In James chapter 2, there's a rather lengthy discussion, and it culminates in verse 17, where he's going to kind of draw his topic to this conclusion. In the same way, faith, if it does, have, if it does not have works, is dead by itself. In other words, in order for faith works to be authentic, you have to work. You cannot have faith without works. Faith without works is dead. And we typically don't associate with dead things, do we? We want a faith that is alive, that is active, that is involved, that is, he says, James says, listen, you show me your works without faith, impossible, and I will show you my faith by my works. In other words, it is the works that testify to the authenticity of faith. So therefore, in life, we are called to do faith works. Faith works. That is the essence of what we are, faith workers. We work faith through how we live our lives. And this is what we're going to discover in Hebrews chapter 11. In fact, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is the reality of what is hoped for, the proof of what is not seen. I like the CSB, but I'm an old timer. The King James is better. In this particular verse, now faith work, in parentheses, now a faith work is the substance of what is hoped for and the evidence of what is not seen. That which cannot be seen can be brought into reality or evidence by the faith work, the deed we do. Let me give you an example so I can bring this to your mind so you won't be confused. Thirst. Thirst is something you cannot see. You may have evidences uh, or it may manifest itself. Dry lips, yearning, hungering, wanting, needing water, dying, manifestations of being thirsty. The Evidence of thirst is water. Water is evidence of thirst because water goes with thirst. So if you have water, the evidence of thirst, which you cannot see. Now, what's the faith work? Drinking. You can have all the water in the world and the most intense thirst but if you're not willing to drink, then you're not going to survive. Faith is the evidence of things unseen. Water is the evidence of thirst you must drink. Now, unfortunately, a lot of people think faith means believing. Like, I'm thirsty, I believe that water will quench my thirst. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. And you keep sitting there saying that the water, I believe you can do it. I can believe you can do it. Water can quench my thirst. Water qu You know what the problem with that is? You will die of dehydration until you get up, pour glass. You have to do faith work. 
you have to drink. And this is all that Hebrews 11 is saying. These are the kinds of faith works that people do who say they have faith, ladies and gentlemen. There are two kinds of works, okay? You understand, two kinds. There is a work that comes through the Spirit, and there's a work that comes through the flesh. Two types of work, faith works and flesh works. Now, if you are a Christian, you can produce both of these. If you're not a believer, you can only produce this one. Flesh work, that which your body craves, that which it desires and wants are the things to satisfy the flesh, the physical. But when you become a believer, you have the spirit and you can do faith works. We sometimes call them works of the spirit. Same thing. Works of the spirit are the same as faith works. Those things that the spirit in, inspires in us. And chapter 11 is calling you to engage in the kinds of works that evidence that you are truly committed and that you are walking in fellowship to Jesus Christ. Now let's see faith work in action. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. We're going to talk about Brother Abel. By faith, by a faith work, in parentheses, Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain did. Now here we have an example of two kinds of works. The kind of work that Abel did versus the kind that Cain did. Abel did a faith work, a work that was evidence of the conviction in his heart. Okay, God told the boys, make me happy, give me your best. He didn't define it. So they went off and they started working, doing their thing. One was a gardener. He planted. And one was an animal man. He had animal. Came time to give God something. Abel gave God his firstborn of his flocks and herds. And God said, that a boy. Cain gave God some of his fruits and vegetables. God says, eh, don't like that. What was the difference? Well, you see, Abel gave of the firstborn of his stuff, which said to God, I believe that you will take care of what will come after that. Cain says, uh, well, I won't give you my first, but I will give you some of what I got, and he gave God the rest. That's flesh. God said, give me your best. And it just so happened that the best demonstration of that was by the firstborn. By faith, he was approved as a righteous man because God approved his gifts. And even though he is dead, he still speaks through his faith work. His work still testifies to what God likes. God likes your firstborn. God likes the first of your best. And that will meet with approval. Those are the kinds of works that will please God. Faith work is really the only way to please God. You can't do it any other way, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, Hebrews 6 says that, 11, 6 says, now without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now, without a faith work, it is impossible to please God since the one who draws near to him must believe that he exists one, and that he rewards those who seek. See, you, you can't just say, you, you don't just sit there saying, I believe, 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 I believe. God says, what are you doing? So, well, I'm sitting here. So you're going to do more than that. Let me see what that causes you to do. Let me see what you are willing to do in light of this faith you say you have in me. Are you willing to drink? You say you got a thirst, there's the water, you got to drink. Now there are obviously ways to display a faith that works, faith works. You basically obey God through your choices and actions even when it doesn't make sense. 
You obey, you set out on a course, you have to make a step, you got to do something. You have to eventually get up and do something. You obey, it may not make sense because you can't see it. It, it hasn't manifested in the fulfillment yet, but on your way to it, you have to continually be involved in the works that are, in fact, the reality of what it is that you're doing. Let me illustrate it by the life of Abraham in the text, okay? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8, we have brother Abraham who had many sons, okay? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8, notice what it says. By faith, by a faith work, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed and set out for a place that he was going to receive as an inheritance, he went out even though he did not know where he was going. Now, what's he doing? He's illustrating for you that a faith work is the evidence of things not seen. Did Abraham see the land? Never seen it before in his life. Didn't know where it was. He didn't know how to get there. How can you go somewhere you don't know where it is? You can't. So Abraham did a faith work. What was, the, what was the very first faith work he did? He picked up, packed up, and then he started walking. Faith work. Now, he could have sat there and said, well, now God told me to get up and go to a land that he's going to show me, and I believe that he's going to give me that land. Nine months later, he says, yeah, I, still, I believe he's going to give me that land. God says, no, that's not how you get it. You're going to have to get up and go to the land. Faith work means you've got to get up and go. You can't just sit there saying, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. Evidence of things not seen. Abraham obeyed and set out for a place, even though he did not know where he was going. He didn't know what it was going to look like when he got there. He didn't know how long it was going to take to get there. He had no clue other than God says, I made a promise, and faith work is what you do in light of the promise that God has made for you. For example, God says he'll give you long life. You live righteously, holy, walk after him and obey his commands, he'll give you long life. You know, about 80 years plus a few more, give or take, you know. So, what do you want to do? Well, you got to get up and do righteous works. I'm always amazed at people who want to live a long life but are not willing to do much righteous work. For example, eating. There's a righteous work and then there's not a righteous work. And... If you're like me, life is a struggle between the righteous and the unrighteous works. Because I love everything that's sweet and good. Have you noticed how most food that's not really good for you don't taste too well? <laughs> you got to obey, you got to do the righteous works. He says, listen, Abraham had a faith work, and it was that he got up and he went to a place even though he couldn't see it. Similarly, he says, the substance of things hoped for can be seen in the life of Sister Sarah. Sister Sarah, Genesis, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, uh, verse 11, says, by, by a faith work, even Sarah herself, when she was unable to have children, received power to conceive offspring, even though she was past the age since she considered that the one who had promised was faithful. So she said, okay, I believe God's word. Therefore, her belief in the word caused her to engage in a faith work, which brought it to fruition. Now, she could have, she could have been, you know, sitting and saying, God says, I'm going to get pregnant. I believe I'm going to get pregnant. I believe I'm going to get pregnant. I believe. And Abraham could have said to Sarah, Sarah, are you pregnant? Uh, I believe you're going to get pregnant. Uh, yeah, I do too. Said, well, are you pregnant today? No. Nine months later, are you pregnant yet? No. She, but I believe you're going to get pregnant. My friend, you can get pregnant by believing you're going to get pregnant. You have to do a faith work. And 
then, of course, faith work means you start painting that tent blue. Because he said, I'm going to give you a sun, so the tent had to be blue. And you get a bassinet, you start saving money, but the baby's going to take money, and you get your doctor or a midwife or whatever they call them these days, some other word. Then you buy some attorney clothes, because you know you're going to need to change. Faith works. You're doing the things that says, I believe this is going to happen, and I'm engaging in the conduct. Now, one of the problems with us, one of the, one of the reasons there's so much confusion is because in English, the word faith and the word to believe, we have two different words that describe the same thing. In Greek, the word pistis, which, by the way, is the word all the way down through Hebrews 11, P-I-S-T-I-S, Pistis. He says, by faith, by pistis, someone did this, 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 and this. That's the noun. Now, the verb in Greek is pistuo. Same word. P I S T I S is the noun. P I S T E U O is the verb. Pistuo, pist. Same word. But in English, we have to have two different words. The noun is faith. The verb is to believe, but they mean the same thing. One is the result, one is the process. To believe process results in faith product. So we, we don't understand, so we are so confused and we're frustrated and we're anxiety because we say we believe, we say we believe, but we don't know that belief in order to be authentic has to have a work that complements it in order for it to be a reality. So if you are sitting here this morning and you're wanting to believe God for something and you're wanting to see it come to reality and you have the hope that it's going to eventually be there and then you just, wow, my first question is going to be, what are you doing that's evidence of what you cannot see yet? You got to be doing something, ladies and gentlemen. You have to get up and go. She considered that the one who promised was faithful. God is faithful, and his faithfulness will always show up. I promise you, God's faithfulness will be evident to you if you are engaging in the faith work that proves the reality of what you cannot see. Because that's what he said. God is not playing a trick on you. God is not trying to give you a... A head fake is not smoking mirrors. God will do what his word says, which is why this 11th chapter is so important, because it's proof. In fact, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 2 says, faith works earn you approval from God. Did you see chapter, chapter verse 2? It says, for by it our ancestors won God's approval. Uh, this word for in, in, the, in the Greek actually should be translated because. So he, sa he says, a da da da, because by a faith work, our ancestors won God's approval. The, actually, verbal testimony of confirmation. God didn't tell the boys how to do. He just said, do this. Please me. Please me. And they sat and they thought and they worked and they began to do the things they believed would in fact please God. And then God would turn around and say, that a boy, that a boy. Or he would say, nah, that didn't, uh-uh. Which is what he did with Cain and Abel. To Abel he said, that a boy. To Cain he says, uh -uh. That's not good. Faith works, earns your approval from God. God will give you a confirmation because if you're walking by faith, that is, you're engaging in faith work, our, as our ancestors done, you too will receive God's approval. 
And he will demonstrate that approval by giving you that which is unseen, that which you cannot see. Faith, work, earns your approval from God. When I got ready to get married, as a pastor, I was already a preacher and I'd already been a pastor. And so I needed a wife that would compliment me in ministry. So I start praying that God would give me that woman. And I believe God would give me that woman. And I just sat in my apartment and never went anywhere. And I just waited for her to ring the doorbell and say, I'm here. You believe that? You shouldn't, because that is not how I got that girl. First thing I did is I got a gym membership. <laughs> you guys, I had to make sure that I was presentationally pleasing at first sight. Now, I know in this new generation, hey, it doesn't matter. You can look like you want, smell. It doesn't matter. She's going to like you because she, nobody can judge you for being who you are, even the woman. You, yeah. You're going to be seeing a long time. Believe me, I got a gym membership. I started getting regular haircuts. I started bathing every day. Got a new mouth washed. I started carrying mouth refreshments in my pocket. Because I thought you just never know when God was going to say, faith work. Bingo, that a boy. And I didn't want to lose her because first impression, boys and girls, and you won't believe where I saw my wife the first time. I was already a pastor. I was doing a church. I was having a program, and I came, I came out of the sanctuary on my way to the office, and there was a pay phone on the wall. That's a phone they used to have to put a quarter in. Okay? <laughs> and there was a woman standing over there, and she had a bag, and it was open, and she was looking in this bag trying to find a quarter. I, 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 that had to be why she was digging in this bag, and she was, wow, and she didn't have a quarter. Who had a quarter? <laughs> Hi there. Hi. Uh, what, what's the problem? Uh, oh, I, I was trying to find a quarter. I got to call my mother because I left one of my gloves at her house. Oh, is that it? Here. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Faith work, boys. <laughs> you, haven't, you haven't met my miracle. You just watch around here one of these days, and you walk up there and say, hey, were you on that phone that day? That was me. Faith work, boys. You have to fit it into action. Hebrews 11:39 says all these were approved through their faith work works. So whatever it is you're trusting God for, whatever it is that you're walking with, if it's unseen, it's out there, you know it's available, you know he wants it, then I suggest you start engaging in faith work. You say, well, how do I know what a faith work is or which one is the right one? You just start working. Spirit of God is inside of you. You even have a plus these days. <laughs> you have the Spirit of God inside you, helping you out, telling you, nope. <laughs> Wrong way, Fellman, that way. Wow, how blessed you are. How blessed we are that we, too. Now, you'll never get your name in Hebrews chapter 11. None of us will. It's over. But if they ever decide to write another one, I want to be in there. Do you? Because you can. As you put into action that which you have faith to see. Father, thank you today for your goodness and your mercy for your people. And I want to pray for all those who, Father, who perhaps have been confused and frustrated because they simply just can't figure out how this faith thing works. I pray, God, that you would help the church, help us, 
help me, a communicator of biblical truth, for your people to understand the challenge that is before us in helping our people to walk by faith. In Jesus' name, amen.